And we're back with some more oxygen not included. Uh, excuse me if my voice is a bit off today. My body is being weak, but the mind is just going to ignore that. Now, this rocket has come back and it's time to, well, make some minor changes here. It's just I've been trying to get these rockets to work autonomously and it's been kind of a problem. So I have an idea. By idea, I mean I'm going to gut the thing entirely and replace it with something a little bit more suitable for our needs. A quick sweep to tidy up the renovation mess. Ta-da! The absolutely brutally stupid but reasonably efficient design. Now this is all about keeping the duplicant in here. Sean is the pilot and they're not allowed out. They can't get out the door. If they try and get out the door, they'll, they can't because they're locked in. They stay in here constantly so that they can keep running back and forth on their rocket. Now their oxygen is provided by these storage bins over here and... Since the other duplicants can get in and out, when they do land, people come in and stock them up with, you know, food, rad pills, and oxalite so that they can keep breathing. And while they're in here, they run on this wheel to train up. Eventually we can cycle them out for a, an untrained pilot, or just leave them there for an eternity. Now you'll notice here, they're the only one allowed in this room. As well as that, this is set to a priority 9 on this manual generator. This is the highest manual priority of anything, so even if they did get out of the rocket, they're set to do mechanical tasks, so the first thing they'll do is come right back into the rocket to run on the wheel, because this is where they want to be. This is their place in life. Well, unless, you know, the rocket needs guidance or something like that. Uh, barring that, there's also the toilet up here. They're the only person allowed in, so when they're landed, no one can, you know, randomly go in and start using their toilet all the time. They've got a nice little bedroom in here, giving them plus two morale. Oh, there was a question on this. Uh, a, a plus two morale bedroom requires you to have a four tile high room, which is why this room actually has four tiles high, and it needs one decor item of which there is the, the corner moulding. So the corner moulding and the four tile high room with a comfy bed makes this uh, not really that important, but there was a few questions on that one. There's the mess hall, there's your washroom, gives them a decent amount of morale, and they can stay in here and get trained up until we don't need them anymore or the cargo running is done, at which point we can let them out. But even when the rockets landed or anything like that, they just live in here. Forever. Works perfectly. One thing you might want to look out for though is... Wait, no, it wasn't Hope. Ah, uh, Brave Venita, Venisat. See this here, this pneumatic door? You'd think Sinatra would not be able to get out. They can. They keep getting out that door. Sometimes they won't be able to get out. Sometimes they will. It's it's so annoying. It's sort of bugged so that they shouldn't be able to get out, but they're still able to run out the door. Yeah, it's just the way it is. That's why we had to go with this method where we actually have the door one tile away. This is wasted space. I used to put the gas pump over there, but yeah, it caused more problems. This, this is this, the style we're going to go with, and I'm going to retrofit all of our rockets to adapt that as their current style. Before we send off our mission to the water planet, though, there is one other thing I want to take care of, and that is this water tank down here. We do keep wanting to siphoning water out of this steam room, but unfortunately it's a little bit warm, so we're going to use some active cooling to cool down this water tank so that we can keep siphoning water off. We're bringing water down from these steam turbines, or we would, if there was actually any cooling left in here. But unfortunately, all our vents have gone dormant, and the water in here, here is now too hot. So all we have to do, we've already got the system built in place, we just splice this sucker on like that, and it'll start filling up this loop with super coolant. There we go, beautiful. Then we'll just de deconstruct that liquid bridge before we turn this on. We, we have to take a few precautions here, because this is not exactly our normal steam room with water pouring down on top of it constantly. We want to make sure that it won't turn on unless the temperature is below 180 C. If it gets too hot in here, we don't want to dump any more temperature in. And if the temperature in the liquid is above 27, we don't need to cool this stuff down too much. So... done. Now what's the liquid at? Perfect. Now it's going to drag some cooling into this section. And that will hopefully get us start running more water from up here and oh yeah there was a small problem with this stifling again it seems that keeps happening to me but we're, we're fixing that as well it turns out there's a lot of heat being given off by our little clay production facility the problem is all the regolith the regolith's like 150 plus degrees or around that and it's making everything in here about 70 c and oh actually it's less than that now but it was bleeding the heat in here which was bleeding into our water supply which was bleeding into our bristle blossoms but problems been taken care of. Everything should be fine from now on. There are always so many little things that try and go wrong on you. Oh, also as well over that, over here we have a liquid reservoir full of molten tungsten. Now, you would think that the liquid reservoir would explode in temperature, but we've stuck it in a vacuum of space and on mesh tiles. So no temperature exchange with anything, meaning while it's warm, it's not going to ever melt. It should remain exactly at 70 C for the entire time. Uh, what is that doing there? Why do we have... Tungsten there, that seems suspicious. Oh, I think maybe a pipe got damaged. This was coming down from up here, and those pipes are... They're toasty. Those pipes are incredibly toasty. That, that insulated pipe there is 519 degrees. Yeah, the tungsten was stuck in those pipes for a long time. 
Anyway, that is slowly getting turned into regular tungsten over here, and we're going to turn a whole bunch of that into thermium. Oh, wow, we have 20 tons of tungsten. You know what that means. A couple of pieces of niobium will create some of that, and that will get us rolling on that section again. All right, all right, enough maintenance. Time to get around to some expansion. Now, over here on Dampona, or the water planet, we need to... Well, access all the water. We're going to need this to run our sour gas boiler. So we're going to have to put a liquid pump down here and then put an interplanetary launcher on top to fire it over towards the oil planet. So first off, let's land our uh, our first team. Mars XC should be our original team. And wait a minute, is that still radiated? Nah, that's not. It's fine. Of course, after this rocket lands, I'm imagining it's going to be a little bit more radiated. Ooh, Jesus. Uh, it'll be okay. We'll leave them it we'll leave them on the rad pills at least for a while. They're gonna be working underwater for a big chunk of this, so I don't think we're gonna need rad medication. Though we'll wait until the early rads from our rocket launch cools down just a wee bit. The first thing we're going to need to do is figure out a landing location for the second rocket, and I was thinking way over here. This will allow us to land the rocket on the edge. I want to keep the rockets as close to the edge as possible because we're going to want to cover the rest of this in solar panels, and we want somewhere where we can land where we're not going to accidentally incinerate them all. So, I'm thinking down here. I do like the idea of just leaving that there where the water pressure will eventually smash through, but we're, we're kind of on a clock here. We've got to do as much as we can in the shortest period of time before we run out of food or oxalite. There we go. Okay, so I did kind of wait around for that to break, but, you know, you've got to have a little bit of fun while you're doing these things. Looks like we've got the opportunity for a landing, though we have actually scouted out some of this, so... Yeah, they're just gonna fly right through the darkness. Okay, uh, that's some very brave piloting. Ooh, and one thing we need to do, we need to immediately grab some pneumatic doors and stick them on here. We're gonna have problems with duplicates trying to get in and out of the wrong shuttles, so we've already restricted them to in here. It just... Otherwise, they try and use each other's toilets, they try and hang around in each other's sh shuttles, and it messes with the, uh, the atmosuit docks. Actually, if we check the atmosuit docks here, let's make these, uh... Vacancy only, just to make sure no one does anything stupid like going into the wrong ones. This also means that if one of them goes, like, we could end up with four of them going into one shuttle and dropping off one of their suits, but that would be awkward, because then the suits would be on the floor. So we're just gonna lock everyone into their shuttles so that they don't do anything too dumb. There are two main goals we have on this planet. The first is to set this up to fire water back to the oil planet, and the second is to grab as much lime as possible. There's like 5.9 tons of lime already. If we bring that back home and we combine that with the iron we recently acquired, we should be able to produce 59 tons of steel. Of course, that's not enough. We're going to need, well, oh god. Doing the math, to convert all of this iron to steel, we're going to need 20 tons of lime. That's actually doable over here, I'd say. There is quite a bit of lime around the place, so 20 tons should not be that big of an issue. But seriously, that's a lot of lime. Eh, never mind, we'll, we'll sort it out. Strip mining out the bottom of this water tank will also drop the water level so that we can hopefully gain access to these water vents. I'd like to start pouring them in just because we can. The plan here is very simple. Start at the top up here and drop everything down to the bottom. Oh, actually, we might want to get these the salt as well. We're running a little bit shy on salt back home to uh, turn all our rust into iron. We are almost done with phase one. Phase one is collect all the lime, all the salt, and store it inside one of the spacefare modules. Once that's done, I want to actually core at the bottom of this, take all of this out. We don't actually want the resources here, but if we core this out now, that would make it harder to collect all the materials we want, because they'd be lower down and further away from the shuttles. So we then core this out. That should drop the water level enough that it's below that water geyser. Well, maybe. And if it is, that water geyser can then start pouring in water. This one we might want to block because it's salt water. So we do want that contaminating anything. Let's maybe put a few airflow tiles around there. Uh, something like that. That should stop that from emitting, and later on we'll have to come back and sort that out. But for now, that should at least get us started. So down the bottom here, we have our liquid pump. This is where we're going to start pumping away this ocean. We're going to need to draw this out at about 5 kilos per second, maybe a little bit more, but that's worry for a later date. For now, we've managed to core out pretty much everything down as far as we want. All the water should flow down to this one spot. We're going to have to put in some filter though to get rid of the nuclear waste. Ugh, yeah, the nuclear waste is going to be an annoyance, but we'll sort something out with that. And water-wise, we've managed to drop the level of the water quite a substantial amount. In fact, our rocket up the top here 
is even getting its paws on some solar panels. So we've actually got light breaking through just to the top of there, which is nice. We're actually generating a few watts here and there. All right, now that that's done, well, mostly done. We need to put ourselves in over here, some sort of interplanetary launcher for launching all the water. Plus we need nuclear waste storage, a battery box, a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm thinking we're probably gonna make it out of the locally sourced sandstone because, you know, there's not a lot else up here. Also, we might wanna put in some sort of sun shield to start, now that I think about it. It's just, the, the sunlight on here is a lot brighter than a normal place. It will get sunstroke if we hang around in the sun too long. So maybe, build some sort of roof over here and then remove it when we're finished. That way, while we're building, everyone doesn't end up, you know, walking around in a very bad mood. This is the interplanetary launchers we're going to use to send the water to the rest of our colonies. Uh, this is the targeting beacon that we're going to use to send over the nuclear waste. This auto sweeper will pick up the, oh, the shells. It turns out these shells now, these uh, interplanetary launcher payload things, can now be picked up on an auto sweeper, I've been reliably informed, which means we can dump the nuclear waste into the payload opener, and then we can pump that into an infinite storage thing to power up these uh, interplanetary launchers. That's the theory. Let's, let's see how well it works. For now, I'm going to load up some igneous rock nearby, just because the Every time we go to build something, they'll grab enough materials to build a few tiles, bring it up and back. I want to have 60 tons of igneous rock close by, and we're going to build ourselves a battery box. We've got to do solar. We've got to do a whole bunch of stuff to make this planet just reasonably self-sufficient so that we don't have to come back here for a long time. Basically, until after we finish the sour gas boiler, at which point we can colonize this place more fully and leave a permanent staff to take care of everything. If we're going to be running, well, anything electrical here, we're going to need battery boxes to store it up because we're using solar. That means we're going to need cooling. And for cooling, I'm thinking, well, we have a giant heat sink down. Oh, yeah, perfect time for a save. Down here, we have a giant heat sink in terms of this water. So we can dump a whole bunch of heat into it. I'm thinking we run our water by the batteries before we send it into the interplanetary launchers. And that keeps everything nice and cool. Well, that's the theory. Oh, and we're also going to want to put in a layer of water there, there, and there. The atmosphere here isn't going to last forever. Plus, it's, it's milligrams. It's not going to keep anything cool. Ooh. And this is going to be expensive. For the radiant pipes, we are using steel. It's not the best material, but we have lots of it. Uh, for, for the conductive wire we're going to run through everything, we are well, we're using steel too, because, well, steel is the only material we brought. And the reason being, it's just so versatile, it's just the perfect thing to stick in a rocket. One bit that's going to annoy me if I was staying here would be those automation signals, because we haven't hooked up any automation to it. But you know what? We're not going to be here, so I don't care. Now, water. We're going to need water to come all the way from the pump at the bottom of the map, and that's going to be a long way down. Like, a long, long way down. Uh, oh. How long do we want this to go down before we start turning? Maybe all the way to the bottom might be the best bet. Yep, right about there, maybe? Yeah, there we go. That means the water will be coming all the way from the very bottom of the map. Of course, that will mean we'll also have to run a power wire all the way from the bottom of the map to power that, going all the way up to the solar panels and the battery banks at the top. And we're down to 9.6 tons of steel. If I have to go back for more steel, this is going to be really embarrassing. No, it seems to be... Wow. This just feels so wrong, spending this much steel. Oh. So, seven tons of steel. That's what we've got left after all of that. That's not too bad. Well, it's actually not... Kind of, you know what? We'll find out when it's done, but I know that's going to hurt. Spending steel that way just feels so horrific. Just, just wrong on so many levels. But it is really handy for these rocket trips. Now, we're also going to put all our glass or store all our glass up here and get ready for solar panels. We're going to stretch the solar panels out this direction and kind of have them going up. Uh, the reason we're going to have them going up is just the amount of light on this planet is quite high. This goes up to 60,000 lux, I think, at midday. It's actually just coming down to it now. But if we check on the star map here, this place has twice the lux of a standard planet. For example, our starting planet has 30,000 lux. Most of these ones around here, all in the core, they all have about 30,000 lux. Whereas this one, 60,000, meaning we can get twice... The, the solar panels max out during the middle of the day. In fact, we can stagger them a bit and even have partially them, some, them partially blocked and they'll still produce more power that way. And while we're at it, we're going to grab ourselves a little bit of water here. That water should, well, provide a conductive medium for the everything going by. Uh, you're done. We can disable you. Perfect. This is actually working out really nicely. Okay, that looks... Oh, this looks kind of silly. Dumb, dumb and silly, but hopefully it works. That's all that counts. 
Now what we want to do is set up a little infinite storage thing for our nuclear waste that we're going to fire over. And we're going to want that to be, ooh, well, maybe not too close so we can do some maintenance. Say I have one there and one there. Let me come up with a little storage box that's going to be a little bit different from our normal ones, but hopefully should work. This is going to be our storage box, but it's going to be a little bit bigger than our previous ones. That'll become clear as we start to dump waste into it. Uh, ooh, oh, no, we'll make these out of igneous rock. We're going to actually stick them inside the waste. I've been advised to do this a few times, but I've never really tested it before. And then I, uh, I did some testing on a test map and realized, yep, this is a good way to do things. It'll become clearer as we actually use it. Of course, when I was building it, I forgot to put in the automation wires to turn on and off the radbolt generators in case, you know, we don't want to be spending that power all the time. That's okay. We can just break right back in and fix that real quick like. Now before we go connecting up the solar I thought we'd go and raid these rocket debris. This is left over from our uh, our brave hero who went into the temporal tear. The dupe who was with us for a very very short amount of time. Poor Zack didn't even get more than a few minutes around and then just poof straight into the the va vastness of space. Now judging by the amount of debris left over I don't think they survived. I'm gonna be a little bit of negative Nelly on that front. All right uh some of that can actually be swept up. There's some oxalite and a few things in there, but oh, never mind. We'll let that mess do its thing. We're going to start installing power, and for that, we're going to need solar panels. Uh, yeah, I think that was where I decided upon. And then what we're going to do is stagger them a little bit. Because they're so much light here, what we can do is just even though we'll be covering a couple of tiles of each solar panel, we will still get full power roughly around daytime. So you can go like that. Yep. And then maybe a few more ladder segments like this. Ooh, let me see. How are we going to build this up? That looks pretty good. That should cover most of our solar needs in this area. Now, unfortunately, it's going to be a little bit slow to start off. So I'm not hooking it up to the battery boxes just yet. And automation-wise, we've turned off, well, pretty much anything that will draw power except for the liquid pump. Liquid pump is the only thing we really care about right now. Once we get about the third solar panel up, I think then we'll hook up the power. How are we looking there? 243, 250. Yeah, once it hits midday, we'll see a lot more power. If Once we get the third one up. You know what? I'm going to hook it up now. Why not? There should be more than enough power. 380 watts. Yeah, there's plenty of power to run the liquid pump. And, yep, yeah, we can see the battery starting to charge. And if we go down to the bottom of the map, we should be start to see water getting pumped. Yep, yeah, there we go. Now, the important thing about this is I've put in a little system here so that when the water gets to the top, it'll provide active cooling all the time, even if we're not firing water. Oh, this is when we can prove something. This here is pulling in 380 watts of power. Those 380 watts, it's basically maxed out. And this one here is pulling in 316 watts of power. So what you have to realize is this thing's actually covering two tiles of this. So doing a bit of messing around here, I've put four solar panels across the top and you'll see they'll take up actually slightly more space than five staggered ones. Now, if you add up 380 watts by 4 and you add up 316 watts by 5, my calculators tell me these 5 will generate 1580 watts right now and these 4 up here will generate 1520. So you're actually only getting about 60 watts more out of these. However, you do have to remember it's just gone past midday. So let's see, the Lux is gone, is gone past its peak, which is 60,000 Lux. As well as that, this solar panel at the top will be generating 380 watts at all times so you squeeze a little bit more power out of the same amount of space and the more light you have the more this works so even though we've got 60,000 lux here if you're on a planet with 100,000 lux you're probably better off covering oh wow either probably about half the solar panel each solar panel is seven tiles wide oh and that reminds me i should probably put those solar panels back where i got them from where's our water is our water up here yet there it is. So the way this is going to work is the water comes through here, goes to the bottom layer and starts cooling everything down. It will pa pass through the bottom layer of chilled water there and then it goes up and rotates all the way around. And it should never stop. The reason being is we put in a little overflow here, a valve. So this is supposed to get through, what is it, six kilos? Anything over the excess of six kilos will get shunted out here. Here we are. And then that gets less through, less through this section. And then we sort of slowly let it out at one kilo per second. So one kilo of water will always be passing through no matter what. And this makes sure we always have just one kilo of cooling constantly going through here to make sure this never overheats because this overheating would be bad. Wow, how's the battery looking? Battery's looking real good already. Ooh, we're not even close to finished. Yeah, some people are going to get a little bit irradiated and a little bit sunburned, but I think it'll be fine. Nice. Now that we've got our power source sorted, a giant battery box to draw upon, we just need some nuclear waste. 
So, time to go back home. Well, a little bit of a... We're going to need a little doping of something else as well, and that would be some naphtha. So, where is it? Yes, exit. Grab us some naphtha right there and dump it in, and then we're going to start diverting all of our nuclear waste into our interplanetary launcher. That's, um... Yeah, that'll be... That'll probably be fine. I'm sure that'll be fine. Just have to figure some way of getting that up there. Hmm. Let me think. From now on, nuclear waste no longer goes to nuclear waste storage here. It's going to get pumped up into the interplanetary launcher. Uh, once it hits 200, 200 kilos, that's going to launch. Uh, actually, how much do we have on board? We have a bunch of naphtha, some phosphor ice. Uh, I think that phosphor is left over from something else. God knows what. But that means we can start retargeting these. Uh, you can fire back up again. Want to make sure you keep charging that cannon. Uh, actually, one of you can charge the cannon. We'll set you to... We'll set you to 200, I think, will be the number. Well, once once we fired a bit. Did fire already? Ooh, wow, did already fire. Uh, yeah, you can be set to, say, 205, just to make sure you give a full charge every time. And if we check the star map, we now have... Where is it? Come on. There you are. Excellent. Some nuclear waste and naphtha winging its way over to Dampona. And there's some horrible mistakes and messes I've made here, but that's okay-ish. We'll we'll sort them out as we go. We'll just get rid of that there, replace that with a door. Well, the... Oh, they've landed. Yeah, interplanetary payloads. How much interplanetary payloads did we launch? Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to hook up the autosweeper. My bad. I didn't power it. Oh. Come on. You know what? Guys, uh... Hurry up. Make that up. 39. Come on. I didn't think these things exchanged heat. Where is the nuclear waste coming from? God damn it. I don't think the nuclear waste likes being in those interplanetary shells. All right. They get into the payload opener, which is... Doesn't like them. Doesn't like them at all, but... Nuclear waste and the naphtha getting dumped in there. Did we mess up in any way, shape, or form? No. Seems to be going in. Damn it. Loading times. All right. Uh, why are you not spreading out? Give me a look at liquids. Uh, there we go. We got nuclear waste at the bottom. A little bit of naphtha on top. That's the way it should be. Uh, oh. Yeah, that's going to leak nuclear waste. That might actually eventually end up getting so damaged it won't work. And we'll have to come back and fix it. But hopefully that'll be far enough in the future that it won't be that big a deal. I think this might work out. And now that we've caught up with the backlog we're still gonna end up with the odd bit of nuclear waste leaking and this will damage this a little bit but it shouldn't do enough damage to actually knock it offline at least for a long time we need about 54 tons of nuclear waste to hit the required amount of rads for what we're going to be trying to do that will that will take a while um we've got radiation coming but i think based on some math i did on how the reactor pumps out waste it's going to be about 150 cycles before we get enough waste to run this at 10 kilo or 5 kilos of water per second so that should be a little while, but that's actually not that bad. We've definitely been running on a lot faster since we don't have no longer been achievement hunting because I can just sort of run things through and let things run overnight if needs be. However, there are a few little things we need to take care of. Oh, what happened there? Why is that not filling up? It feels weird. Oh, there's only 15 kilos of nuclear waste. I think the next one will push that last blob over. I was worried the naphtha might end up in that corner as well, but no, I think... Yeah, nuclear waste is taking up that spot now. Excellent. Now, if we check the rad overlay, we should be getting... Yeah, there's 400 plus rads there, 400 plus rads there, and it's only going to keep growing. Perfection. We don't need to turn those on just yet because we don't need to start firing these. Uh, let's maybe fire one just to make sure it works. Actually, let's get shots out of both of them. We'll turn you on, and we'll turn you on. Now you're going to fire the rad bolts across here and into the interplanetary launchers, and what are you guys doing? No one. Let's just lock you out of there for a minute. While those are charging up, which will be a while. Down here, we have made a few changes. One, we brought it, we built an exosuit forge because we had some reed fiber lying around over here. Why not repair a few of those Atmos suits? We had a, a few damaged ones. As well as that, one second, we're going to get rid of those buildings there. I want to make an air gap between this battery box and where we're about to be launching our rockets. Uh, they can all go as well, and we're going to seal those in. And one last thing we're going to do here is we are going to set you to water. If you detect... Where are you? There we go. Water is selected. If this detects water going through the pipe, it's going to go to send a signal to a not gate to telling that 
liquid vent to turn off. I should mean all water should be allowed through, but anything else will get let through the liquid vent and dropped out of there, which should mean it should end up down here somewhere. So nuclear waste, things like that, should not cause a problem. And oh my god, who dropped all of those? Guys, guys, pick those up. I want to put those back on the ship. You muppets. <laughs> ah, you can't leave them alone for two seconds. All right, with that done, that should take care of filtration and that should take care of getting us all the rads. And now, the only thing left to do is do the sour gas boiler. Now, some of you may have noticed the giant, giant, huge mistake I made. I didn't notice it until I was just about, I think it was here one time I figured it out. Yeah, there's a rocket right there. Yep, and you might notice that its launch trajectory would appear to be blocked by a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff we spent a lot of time building. So, yeah, that's just gonna stay there now. I think we'll have to send back a rescue rocket to take these out of here. We'll dismantle this and move it into the other rocket and bring back the spare parts. But, uh, yeah, they're gonna have to stay here for a while until we get a rescue rocket over. I just want to make sure this thing is perfection anyway before we leave. Everything looks to be working perfectly, and we're about to get a check and see if our little water filtration system is going to work. In theory, the nuclear waste the moment it hits there should just drop right out. Okay, come on. You best work. Don't make me look silly. Or do both. Nope. Dropped him right out. Then that nuclear waste will fall all the way down here and land in this pile at the bottom. And since it's trapped in between these two tiles, it shouldn't be able to get back in into the liquid pump. That way, any of that nuclear waste we've gotten from the nuclear from the rad rocket launches or any of the nuclear waste over here, if it ends up down at the bottom, we should be able to deal with it. All right, that leaves just one last thing to do. I think what we're going to do is take everyone with us. As in, we're going to take all six of them, stick them on one rocket, and send them home. Uh, yeah, you three are going to be, be riding inside this, and you're not going to have tables. Actually, we might just... Place down three temporary tables and just leave them sleep on the ground. Sleeping on the ground would probably be the least negative. Yeah, that's a minus one plus and loss to athletics, which you're not going to need. Instead, we could turn this place into one giant mess all here. Ugh. Yeah, let's just, uh, let's get everyone into one cabin. We'll try and take some of that oxalite with us, though. I, I really don't fancy leaving 13 tons of oxalite behind. That stuff's expensive. We managed to strip most of the useful resources out of there and bring them over to here. So we've managed to stock up on 20 tons of oxalite almost, and we managed to even take out most of the atmos suits. Beds, they're gone. We've got only one mess hall, and we've got mess tables for everyone. That way they can at least get a little bit of morale. They're not going to like the sleeping on the floor, but... Oh, well, at least it won't, it'll be a short trip until they get home anyway. Well, looks like they don't want us to go home. Uh, for some reason, it's saying it's automation controlled. The rocket platform's launch operation is controlled by automation signals. I've had this happen before. There's no... Automation signals on this rocket launch platform. God damn it. Uh, I'll try a restart. There we go. A quick restart. All is good with the world again. Off you go. Now, what we've done here is we have installed a sort of a, a breaker wall all the way along here to stop the very, very, very hot gases from getting into... Oh, I forgot about this. Damn it. I have a little alarm system here set up in for, for when these uh, tanks fill up with water so that I can come back and deconstruct them. But nope, that that's... Fine. Where were we? Yes, demo. So that keeps the uh, the fumes from the nuclear waste or the nuclear rockets from getting in here and turning and basically cooking all of that stuff alive. It will, of course, drastically drive up the temperature of that wall. But I think, yeah, I think it'll be fine. I mean, it's touching a whole bunch of water. It'll probably be okay. Well, our six-person team flies home in a very, very cramped rocket, and what I got to imagine is going to be really, really uncomfortable situation. Well, on the bright side, none of them are flattering, so it's not like the worst thing in the world. But over here, let's just go over this little box here. And normally what I do when I'm making these is I put the rads on the outside, or I put the, the detectors on the outside, the rad bolt generators. Um, this gives us pretty good rad generation because we're getting it diagonally from over here. However, putting them on the inside was recommended in the comments multiple times, and I eventually got around to testing it, and yes, it's it's an awful lot better. I was worried that it wouldn't be quite nearly quite as efficient, or it'd be only slightly, marginally better. No, it's about twice as good. Sticking them inside is really, really a good plan. Now, you do have to be a little bit more careful about stacking them in here because you've got to put in the nuclear waste and you've got to put in your liquid that's going to, well, in this case, we're using naphtha. You've got to put in your little blob of naphtha to make sure you can overpressurize the vent. But it seems to work out just fine, and then you have to fire the the, uh, the bolts out diagonally. And right now, we're already up to, ooh, about 90, about 95 rads per cycle. Per mi well, 95 rads per cycle, which is quite good, but we need to be generating about 1,300 total, or about, say, about 700 rads out of each one of these. Which is, is going to be a while, so we'll need 700 rads out of each of these to provide enough rad bolts to get the interplanetary launchers to launch the water over to the oil planet. 
this is one of the downsides of trying to run an interplanetary system is trying to launch stuff is actually really expensive in terms of rads. You effectively, if you want to launch any quantity at all of resources from one planet to another continuously, like running, say, a transport belt full of materials from one planet to another, you need a nuclear reactor. You literally need enough rads from a nuclear reactor, and it's just not feasible to put a nuclear reactor on every planet you want to do that on. So this nuclear waste one seems to work. We might actually end up grabbing some of the nuclear waste out of this. I've been experimenting around on the side, and there is ways to get the waste out of here without letting it explode, and we should be able to pump it into other... Uh, other devices if we need to. With the return of this team, a few wonderful things happen. Namely, they've brought back 27.6 tons of lime. 21 tons of salt, which we can turn into. With all the rust we have, there'll be 60. 60 tons of iron will come out of that. So, yeah, we're just going to get a lot of steel out of this all around, which is wonderful. And that was the final step before we have to go to the oil planet. We do appear to have run into a problem, though. Um, no one's been repairing any of the lead suits. Why not? That's uh, really awkward. Now everyone's trapped inside. I need to let someone out to do some repairs. Someone's got to go into the steam room and grab a whole bunch of glass and bring it back out. Uh, oh, let me think for a minute about this. This is just going to be awkward because someone's got to run into the steam room down here, grab a whole bunch of glass and bring it back out because I think that's the only glass we've got on the map, is it? Oh, let me double check. So it turns out we have 200 kilos of glass in the ship we just brought back. So if we can get some of the suits repaired, we'll be fine. I, uh, I opened this door here so everyone can leave via that door, but I locked access to the industrial se sector. No one's allowed into the industrial sauna or this whole farming area until we solve the problem. I have no idea how this happened. I think this, this was level five, so maybe they just ignored it as a task and did everything else and just slowly we ran out of suits. That's really embarrassing. Well, that's so much better. Suits for days for everyone. Now all we gotta do is build ourselves another rocket, crew it up, uh, get it ready, and then we can launch six people over to the oil planet. And then we can finally get around to what we've been planning to for ages, but literally all the things we've been doing the last few episodes have just been planning for getting to here so that we can finally knock this out. We have five oil wells here, and we're going to be able to pump over five kilos of water from the water planet to make those all activate. Well, not straight away, but... By the time we build this uh, sour gas boiler, it's going to be a while. I'm thinking we might want to squeeze the sour gas boiler in here. This seems to be the new place because there's a, a gas vent here and there's an oil reservoir there, but fitting them in there is probably the best bet. We can't fit them in over this side because cool steam vents in the way. And we can't fit them in over this side because there's a volcano in the way. So we're kind of stuck doing it Yeah, here. Hopefully we can make it narrow enough. I might have to go back to the redesign. Oh, never mind. But first, before we can even do that, we need a power source and a rad source to run our system. So I'm thinking nuclear reactor over here, maybe? We might be able to integrate the minor volcano. No, 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 no. We'll just stick in a nuclear reactor and, and use that as a power source and a rad source to fire the uh, the methane when we're done. Apologies if I've been a bit disjointed today. It's just uh, running a little bit under the weather and my brain's just not 100% today. But uh, I think we got most of the stuff we really needed to done. And from now on, I think Tampona or the water planet, we shouldn't need to go back there for a very, very long time. And when we do come back, it will be for a more permanent colonization effort. We'll be leaving like three or four duplicates behind fed entirely off methane. But I'm going to cut this out here for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.